So the second section of Young and Friedman's University of Physics, Chapter 15 on Mechanical Waves, it goes into periodic waves a little bit uh, more detailed. Still a very easy section. It's the third section where the math goes a little bit uh, to the high end. Uh, but this is still pretty easy. We're talking about two basic kinds of periodic waves, uh, the transverse and the longitudinal waves in this section. Um, we're going to remember some stuff from simple harmonic motion uh, that we've uh, learned in the previous chapter, I believe it was. So let's start. Periodic transverse waves. Remember, transverse waves are waves that go up and down, uh, if you remember from the previous video. So we, we say a transverse wave is periodic if it's repetitive. So, you know, you drop a pebble into a lake and the wave is periodic and usually sinusoidal. Um, in other words, in the shape of a sine, uh, if you were to graph a sine wave or a cosine wave. So a wave pulse is a single one of those waves. That's a wave pulse. So like if you're in a, a stadium and you do the wave one time around, that's a wave pulse, a single wiggle, as it were. So just getting some definitions. See, this is easy. Now, as it turns out, any periodic wave uh, can be represented as a combination of sinusoidal uh, waves, cosine or, or sine. Uh, this is a fascinating feature uh, to, to the world, to nature, that a periodic, any, any wave that's periodic can be mathematically represented in terms of sines and cosines. Um, in, when we talk about a sine wave, an up and down wave, a crest is a peak which is a positive, the positive amplitude. And then a trough, trough is a negative peak, as it were, the negative amplitude. Uh, again, we're just getting terms out there. This is an easy section. Uh, so uh, here are some familiar terms from, I believe it was the previous chapter on simple harmonic motion. Uh, so A is for amplitude. That's good enough for me. So A, capital A, stands for either the uh, the, the peak positive or the negative peak ne uh, in the trough, uh, that's the negative amplitude. F is for frequency, remember that? Um, again, easy stuff here. So the period is the inverse of the frequency. So if frequency is cycles per second, the period is seconds uh, per cycle. Um, so frequency, cycles per second, uh, period, seconds per cycle. So the, the period uh, symbolized by capital T is going to be 1 over the frequency. This is all from a previous chapter. Remember omega? This is a small omega. Omega is the angular frequency which basically translates the frequency into into basically a periodic circle kind of thing. Um, and so basically it's converting it to radians. Um, so if the frequency is cycles per second, hertz, uh, then radians per second is the angular frequency. You basically just multiply 2 pi uh, times the frequency. Okay, so when a sinusoidal wave passes through a medium, every particle in the medium undergoes simple harmonic motion with the same frequency. So if you were to look at just one, one point on a rope that's being waved, you know, it's going to go up and down and up and down. That's a simple harmonic motion, up and down, up and down. Um, for every particle in that rope as the wave goes through it, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be going under, every point's going to be undergoing a transverse simple harmonic motion. Okay, so all of that has mostly been reviewed. So now we're going to add a new tool to our tool belt, and that is the concept of wavelength. So wavelength in a, in a sine wave or a cosine wave, wavelength is basically the distance from one point to an equivalent point later on in that cycle. So it could be from, from a peak to a peak, or from a trough to a trough, or from halfway up a trough to halfway up a trough, which is going to be zero, you know, or the equilibrium kind of point. And we're going to, we're going to use the Greek letter lambda. That's what that, uh, this, this letter right here is. I have it in parentheses, but the letter in the parentheses is a Greek, a lowercase Greek lambda. And so that is the symbol for frequency. So the speed, or the, the, the wave speed, V, V V here stands for the wave speed. The wave speed, by the way, in a mechanical wave, uh, usually is going to depend on the medium of the wave. And it's it's not going to change. So if you're, if you're dealing with the, the medium of a pond, 
there's going to be a particular wave speed that any wave is going to have once you start, you know, the motion. Um, and so the speed doesn't change. It's a constant, as it were, in, in these sorts of mediums. But the, the wave speed is basically going to be the wavelength divided by the period. So the wavelength maybe gives you a certain number of millimeters or whatever, meet, you know, probably not meters, but it's going to give you a, a, a distance. And then the time is going to give you seconds per cycle. So uh, the lambda is, is, say, centimeters per cycle. And the, the period is seconds per cycle. So you put them over each other. Um, the cycle cancels out and you end up with, say, millimeters per second, you know, or something like that. So we're going to end up with a speed if we divide the wavelength uh, by the period. Uh, alternatively, uh, since uh, the frequency is 1 over t, uh, the velocity of a wave is going to equal the wavelength times the frequency. This is, again, something we're, we're going to use a lot in the rest of this physics book at various points. So the, the speed of a wave is going to equal the wavelength times the frequency. Again, I've told you already that v is the wave speed, and I've told you already that in many mediums, the velocity is the same uh, for all frequencies. So there you have it. We've gotten the second section on the table. That was easy. You know, give me something hard. Um, we're dealing with, uh, oh, actually, there's another slide, because that's been transverse waves. It's basically going to be exactly the same for longitudinal waves. If transverse waves are up and down waves, longitudinal waves are, are uh, um, I can't, it's, it's not that it goes back and forth, uh, but it's horizontal. It's going to be um, compressed and rarefied, compressed and rarefied. So you're going to have a denser space and a less dense space, and a denser space, and, it, and so the wave, the wave is, a, is a wave of density, as it were, through the, the, the medium uh, for a longitudinal wave, a horizontal wave. But basically, all the, same, all the same principles are going to apply. You're going to have a region of in intense, increased density, uh, compressed space, and then a, a space of reduced density, a rarefaction. So that's for longitudinal waves. Again, wavelength is the distance from one point to an equivalent point. So from one point of compression to an equivalent point of com the, next, the next equivalent point of compression. Or from one point of rarefaction to the next uh, equivalent point of rarefra rarefaction. That's going to be the, the wavelength for a longitudinal wave. Same formulas are going to apply. Um, velocity equals uh, wavelength times frequency and so forth. So longitudinal waves, nothing to fear here. Uh, fairly easy section, I would